Hello world, it's Bob DeMullen from ProDad. With me today is John Barnes, esteemed aerial drone pilot. And we're going to learn today about how to fly these magnificent machines. And John's going to give us a lot of uh, fun and helpful tips. And uh, you know, before we get started with the, the fun stuff, John, we should probably talk a little bit about safety with these things. Yeah, this is um, where we're standing here. Um, I'm sure you can see on the camera, it's wide open. There's not a, a tree or a light pole or anything to be had. And um, that's a good thing to keep in mind when you're when you're going to fly one of these. Um, you might think, oh, I can just go down to the local park. Uh, but as soon as you get your quad in the air, trust me, everything kind of shrinks in on you. And what seemed like an abundance of space, suddenly it doesn't seem like much. And you'll, you'll find something and hit it. Um, so pick something like this if you can, something with a bunch of space. You want to be mindful of other people, too. Um, it's just rude and dangerous to like be flying over people that don't really know what's going on or what you're all about. So... Um, try to try to make sure that you got an area that's just devoid of people. Dogs too. Um, I had a dog once run up, and right as I spooled up a prop, the dog jumped in and like tried to bite it. And uh, the last time I saw him, he was like heading for the vet. So things like that, you just got to be careful. You got to have a little bit of respect for these and for other people when you're going to fly them. Right. Now, John, tell me a little bit about the battery packs that power these things. I've heard there's some things you need to be a little bit careful about. Yeah, it's, you know, these are all powered by lithium polymer batteries. Um, they've been around for probably a, a decade now. They're great because they pack a lot of energy density into a small package. Um, if you read anything on the internet, though, you might you might think, I'm never going to have one in my house because people's houses and garages and cars have burnt down. Really, if you just have some common sense safety, you can avoid most of that ever happening to you. Follow the, rec the uh, manufacturer's recommendations when it comes to charging them. Uh, don't ever just like put it on the floorboard of your car and plug it into the cigarette lighter while you're flying. You're just asking for problems. Or uh, if you're going to charge it at home, you know, don't do it unattended. Use a good quality charger. Um, and just store these things in a place that if anything bad would happen, it's not going to jeopardize your, your property or your, your, your family's health. Okay, so now that we have our bearings about us, let's look a, bit, a little bit about you know, all the different parts and pieces that go on one of these drones. So, John, give us the basics. Okay, what we have here, this is just a 450 clone. You can put it together, uh, real basic parts. Everybody sells arms and frames. Um, you need a transmitter, you need a receiver. Um, that's the two uh, main parts for controlling this thing. Um, right here is your flight controller. That's the real brains then, um, that's gonna control the motors. And uh, it also has advanced uh, sensors, uh, um, accelerometers and gyros. and uh, it's what makes this thing inherently stable. Um, you've got your frame, which is really the, the two center pieces here, uh, your four arms. Um, you need a power distribution board because out on each arm you have one electronic speed controller or ESC running each of four motors. So your power distribution board uh, distributes your battery power to all four assemblies. Um, if you've got an octo or a hexo, you're going to need an even bigger power distribution board. And then you slip a LiPo battery in here and hot it up, and um, that's pretty much a, a clone ready to go. Now, John, this one you put together yourself. Now, you know, a lot of our audience is just getting started. You know, are there ones that they can buy, and out of the box, everything is pretty much ready to fly? They just need to charge it and go? Yeah, there's, um, there's three uh, drones in this size that I know of right now, three main ones. Of course, DJI Innovations released their Phantom, and that's, that's literally out of the box. Everything you need, transmitter. Uh, battery, battery charger, um, you just basically put the legs on that thing, the props, and you're ready to go. And the flight controller's got some really nice advanced algorithms too, GPS hold, attitude mode. It, it's a pretty advanced uh, drone. Then um, you also have the Walkera. They came out with a 350. It's a little less advanced, but it's also uh, quite a bit uh, fewer dollars involved to buy that one. And then Blade also makes a 350. Um, so you got three big choices now if you just want to go buy something and not have to actually build it like I did this one. Now, someone who's just starting out, what would what should they be expecting to pay for a complete for a complete uh, copter ready to go? Well, that that Phantom I was talking about recently, they, they dropped the price about 200 bucks on that um, for a couple of reasons because they got some good competition from Walkera and Blade, and also uh, because they're coming out with their next greatest thing. They just announced it last week, and that's the the uh, DJI Vision, which is out of the box FPV first person view takes it to a whole other level it's a whole other conversation um, but you, so you're talking about 500 bucks for a phantom and I think you can do uh, the blade or the Walkera for 100 150 bucks less than that right now okay that's still pretty affordable 
All right, well, great. Well, thanks, John. Let's get ready to fly.